Difference between E7018 and E6010. Gary A. Pace, PECWI, April 2019. Where does weld metal come from? I always use this slide. It's kind of my go-to. But we're going to talk about shielded metal arc welding. And my intended audience for this um, video is somebody that is, does, is just getting into welding as far as, let's say, an engineer or from that standpoint. And you look on there and you just see numbers. Ooh, 6010, 7018, without realizing, okay, it's not just welding rod and it's the only difference is the numbers. No, there's some real fundamental differences between um, 6010 on one end of the spectrum and 7018 on the other. And why when we weld things with the welding codes or um, when we put things together, there's certain times we use 7018, certain times we have a need for 6010, and there's different characteristics between the two types of filler material. And I'm just going to talk about, you know, the, the major differences. And my audience is not intended to be people that already know this material. It's just as I'm trying to present it to, let's say, a civil engineer or a mechanical engineering type that's never heard these numbers before and they're trying to figure out okay he's talking about this or low hydrogen or why do I care if it's got low hydrogen we're kinda gonna go off into the weeds in that direction so if you already know this stuff this might be a good time to tap out but if not you're welcome to stay and if you've never heard any of this terminology before, hopefully we'll enlighten you a little bit as to the differences between 6010 and 7018. Molten steels have a tendency to absorb hydrogen from the surrounding atmosphere and to expel it when they solidify. Some types of electrode coverings send a lot of hydrogen into the atmosphere surrounding the arc and the molten puddle. This hydrogen is frequently enough to cause microscopic cracks in the heat affected zone of some steels. To eliminate this problem, low hydrogen electrodes have been developed to weld the newer high tensile strength steels. Why do we worry about hydrogen when welding? Hydrogen contri can contribute to delayed weld or heat affected zone cracking. Hydrogen and other factors such as high residual stresses and crack sensitive steel can lead to delayed cracking in steels hours or days after the weld has been completed. The following three variables can make welds more susceptible to hydrogen cracking. High strength steels, thick sections, and heavily restrained parts. When welding these materials, it is recommended to use low hydrogen welding processes and low hydrogen consumables. When welding these types of materials, the welder also needs to follow proper preheat, interpass, and postheat procedures. It is also to, important to keep the weld joints free of other sources of hydrogen such as oil, rust, paint, and moisture. So why do we worry about hydrogen when we're welding? I'll boil this down. Because hydrogen gets dissolved into the weld metal and it's trying to look for a way out. And as the weld cools and the metal cools, it doesn't have that quick transit to the surface. Hydrogen travels or swims through solid metal a lot quicker and a lot faster when the material is warm. So that's why we're talking about post-weld heat treat and preheat. This helps the hydrogen escape. But one of the things we want to do is we don't want to introduce that hydrogen into the weld metal to start with. So that's why we talk about using low hydrogen consumables, something like a 7018. 6010 is not a um, low hydrogen material because it's got organic matter in it. It's made out of wood chips and paper and pulp type materials. So this is why we worry about hydrogen when we're welding is because it's going to cause it can have the ability to cause cracking if we don't deal with it. So that's why we really watch it when we're welding high strength steels, thicker sections and um, configurations of highly restrained parts. Here's a you know a list of some common SMAW electrode coating descriptions. Um, for the sake of redundancy, 
We've got XX10, which would be 6010, which is a high cellulose sodium, which we're talking about here. And we've got the low hydrogen iron powder additions to the, um, I want to say the mineral-based low hydrogen EXX18 electrodes. Electrode flux coatings. The coatings used on most SMAW electrodes consist of two basic materials, mineral coatings and cellulose coatings. However, a combination of the two materials may be used. The mineral coatings consist of metallic oxides such as clay, feldspar, and titanium. The cellulose coatings consist of materials such as wood pulp, sawdust, and cotton. Okay, so when we start talking about filler materials for shielded metal arc welding, we're talking about, you know, the nomenclature. There's a definite um, classification system. You know, the first time you hear it, you're like, what? This is just numbers but once you know how to read it so we got the e which indicates electrode it means we're going to be running electricity through it and melting it um that's the first number the second number we're looking at is the tensile strength which is the next two digits which would be the six and the zero the 60 indicates 60,000 psi tensile strength so then we go on to the third one which is it indicates that it's for all welding positions so there's a couple other different ones here um, you can go two three and four I've never really dealt with the three and the four in that third position but the one means it's for all position and then the zero indicates the kind of flux we're going to use so in this instance it's a cellulose sodium based flux which means that it's basically wood chips, ground up paper, um, organic material. So you, that's the that's one of the difference between this and 7018 is this has got cellulose in it. 7018 doesn't have any wood chips. But the main thing with 6010 is you need to remember is that it has the flux on the outside of that um, bare wire is basically wood chips and paper and some other material thrown in to hold it together. Cellulose sodium. Electrodes of this type use cellul cellulosic material in the form of wood, flour, or reprocessed paper. The gas shield contains carbon dioxide and hydrogen, which are reducing agents. These gases tend to produce a digging arc that provides deep penetration. The well deposit is somewhat rough and the spatter is at a higher level than other electrodes. It does provide extremely good mechanical properties, particularly after aging. This is one of the earliest types of electrodes developed and is widely used for cross-country pipelines using the downhill welding technique. It is normally used with direct current with the electrode positive reverse polarity. Um, cellulose coated electrodes protect the molten metal with gaseous zone around the arc as well as the weld zone. So this stuff, cellulose sodium EXX, is basically burning wood chips or paper, and it's creating carbon dioxide gas around the weld pool. And that keeps oxygen and nitrogen from contaminating our weld pool. So this one gives the gases tend to produce a digging arc. So these gases help with a really dig, deep digging arc that you won't find with other um, weld materials, filler metal types like the E7018. And you're also not going to have as thick a, a slag layer with E6010 because it doesn't have the minerals near the minerals in it that this uh, 7018 is going to have. So you're going to notice there's going to be a, a difference in the slag, a difference in the slag, a different in the in the way that it runs, and you're going to have a lot more spatter and fire. Um, and it 7018, it doesn't when it is when you're welding with that, it doesn't produce the gas that this does to protect the the weld zone. It's just got a really heavy slag um, formation that protects the weld pool 
from atmospheric contaminants. 7018 filler metal electrode. 7018, the E, once again, like with 6010, the E indicates electrode. The next two digits indicate that it's got a tensile strength of 70,000 PSI. The, the third um, number in there, 1, indicates that it is welding all positions. Then we get to the 8. This indicates the kind of f uh, flux coating we have. So in this case, it would be a low hydrogen potassium ion powder electrode. And from what I've been reading, the majority of that material is made up of fluor spar and limestone. And then they throw in iron powder and some potassium. And that's what it is. It's basically a mineral coating from what I've read. They started out back in the day with E7015. And then they that was the original low hydrogen electrode. And then there was an evolutionary process. And then they developed 7016 and 7018. So that you can see there's no wood chips in this, cotton or other organic material. So that's, I guess, the main point I'm trying to point out here is this is a low hydrogen weld material, whereas the 6010, it is intended to have hydrogen in it. It is an organic material in that coating. It is wood chips, crushed up paper, stuck onto a um, piece of wire, more or less, a piece of coat hanger. And this has got um, a mineral coating, a non-organic coating. And we don't want any hydrogen in this. We want really, really low levels of hydrogen in this filler material, um, flux coating. 6010, we want the, the hydrogen in there for it to function correctly. Here we have a picture of some typical uh, low hydrogen electrodes. Iron powder is added to the electrode. And if the content is higher than 35 to 40 percent, the electrode is classified as EXX18. I picked that one out of a military manual, so um, that's where I got that information. But you can see here there's some examples of E7018, which is a low hydrogen potassium iron powder covered electrode. And you can they make them in E8018s and 9018s. And when they do that, they just um, modify the chemistry of the, I think they modify the chemistry of the core wire, and then they throw some stuff into the electrode, the flux coating, throw some additional alloying elements in to get it to the chemistry that you want. Okay, so just looking at the numbers here, I'm not going to go through all of these. I'm just going to touch base with the two um Electrodes 6010, which is up in the top and it's outlined in red, and 7018, which is at the bottom, outlined in green. Um, E6010 is a, they're both all position electrodes, as you can see from the, the one in the third um, place, I guess, in the nomenclature. So the one stands for all position. The 60 is tensile strength and the 70 is tensile strength. You can get E7010 too. E6010 is I think a little more common but you can get E7010. Okay one of the main differences is you can see in the second column is penetration. If you've ever welded with 6010 it'll, it's, it's a deep digging rod. It will dig in and um, it has a very distinctive way it flows and chews into a base material. Whereas E7018, it has a little bit of digging action, but not nearly as deeply penetrating as 6010. Um, you can see where the cellulose, percent cellulose in the coating. Um, 6010 has up to 40% of that um, electrode coating is cellulose. It is covered in wood chips. 40% of that coating is wood chips, up to 40%. You go down to 60, uh, E7018, there's none. There's zero cellulose in that coating. Um, deposition rates. Well, this goes to E6010 has a really low deposition rate. But you're not using it for its deposition rate. You're using it because it's a fast freeze electrode. It'll freeze. It's like It would be like 
quick free quick uh, drying concrete that you always see in the movies, right? The concrete that dries in like two minutes. Well, similar. It's a fast freeze electrode. It freezes really quick, which allows you to weld open roots with it and do a lot of things that you can't do with other electrodes. 7018 is a has a moderate deposition rate and it's known as a fill freeze. It kind of freezes quick, but it doesn't it isn't a fast freeze like 6010. 6010 can have up to 10% iron powder in the coating. Whereas 7018 can have up to 40%. So this contributes to our deposition rate. We've got our electrode core, which is a, basically a piece of wire, and around it is this electrode flux coating. Well, with 7018, they decided they needed faster deposition rates, so in that flux coating, they threw in iron powder, and it helps you get a faster deposition rate on your um, for this electrode. And then you'll see the typical bead surface of fillet weld. Um, E6010 is most, it's pretty flat if, when you weld with it, it's flat or slightly convex. You really got to well lay down some material and manipulate it to get it to go into a convex. Whereas, um, 7018, when you run it, it's a drag rod and it comes out really nice and it's a slightly convex bead shape when you weld with it. But two totally different um, appearances on the surface of fillet welds when you weld with them. So these are the basic, um, some of the differences between the two, um, these two filler metals, 6010 and 7018. Deposition rates. So here we're going to take a look at the deposition rates of E6010 and E7018. So there we've got. You can see I've outlined in blue going in a horizontal direction. 530 seconds of an inch of uh, diameter for the filler materials, the two respective filler materials. So for 6010, we're, we can expect 3.1 pounds per hour for a deposition rate if we're just going to beat hell, right? Well, we can get about another... 50% on top of that with the E7018 of the same size, the same diameter. But we're going to run that E7018. You can see we're going to run it a little hotter. We're going to run it at 230 amps. And the E6010, we're going to run it 130 amps. So we're going to run it quite a bit cooler, and it's we're not going to get near the deposition rates. I know I didn't, uh, I'm not intending to uh, talk about E7024, but you can see where E7024, which is flat and horizontal fillets, um, you can see where that stuff, you can really get some deposition rates. Your deposition rates with that are, you know, two, two and a half times of what you'd get with E6010. But the 7018's got up to 40% of that flux coating is iron powder, so that's going to, um, help our deposition rates. So this is one of these things we need to keep in consideration when we're, you know, trying to decide what we need to do, what our intended goal is. So if you're trying to fill up a, a very big hole with um, filler metal, E6010 is probably not your choice if you're going to try and do it in an economical fashion. But this is just, you know, like I said, to I wanted to show you the different deposition rates and that there is a difference between 6010 and 7018. So our electrodes fall into different categories for shielded metal arc welding. In addition to the electrode coatings and the tensile strength um, characteristics and groupings, we've also got groupings by how the how the material flows into the the weld puddle I guess was what it would be performance characteristics is what this said so fast freeze would be things that we use on mild steel um, something like a 6010 
quick solidification of the weld pool. The weld pool, you, you just, like with 6010, you run it with a, a whip motion, a whip and pause. So you get out of the weld puddle, you let it freeze, and you come back in. Get out of the weld pool, come back in, let it freeze. So it's like a magic, um, quick drying concrete almost. So it just, it's amazing how quick that weld pool will solidify for you. It's got deep penetrating arc, so it's like got a really deep digging arc, and says it's recommended for out of position welds. So once you kind of learn how to run this stuff, you can run it uphill or horizontally, and it doesn't fall out on you very um, easily. It, it tends to stay in place relatively well. Um, and like I said, it's got a deep penetrating arc. Um, fast fill, it's got the highest deposition rates. This would be something like a 70-24, which we're not really talking about. It's got a stable arc, a thick flux, and it's only flat and horizontal laps only. We go to the fill freeze. A fill freeze is a combination of like a fast fill and a fast freeze. These are general purpose electrodes. Um, characteristics of a fast freeze and a fast fill so you can it freezes relatively quickly but it also f deposits a significant amount of weld metal in comparison with a fast freeze and then we go to low hydrogen which is something like a 7018 these are generally classified as their own little uh, characteristic group and but they act like um, the fill freeze they deposit quite a bit of weld metal but they freeze relatively quickly but not as quickly as a fast freeze low hydrogen electrodes in my experience um, you got to really know what you're doing when you're welding or the the puddle will fall out on you if that I'm trying to um, explain it but you know, the, the weld metal is more fluid, so it has a tendency to droop on you, and it doesn't freeze as quickly as 6010. So this is the major one of the, another major difference between 6010 and 7018 is how, pa how fast the, the weld metal freezes and the, um, how penetrating the arc is. The arc on 7018 isn't a very deep penetrating arc, not nearly as deeply penetrating as 6010. So there's your electrode characteristic groupings and some differences. Electrode categories and F numbers. According to Section 9 of ASME Boiler and Pressure Vessel Code and the AWS Structural Welding Code, the covered electrodes for welding mild and low alloy steel can be placed into four categories. The electrodes within each of these categories generally operate and run the same way. So at the lower end, you've got high deposition group stuff, materials, filler materials. You can see they've got, it's all ends in a 20, a 24, 27, 20, 28. That's the material, it's high deposition. You can run it in flat and horizontal fillets is pretty much what it's good for. Um, if you qualify with that, you don't get to use anything else. Um, you've got the F2s which are um, XX12, XX13, and 14. If you qualify with these filler materials, you get to use the F1s also. We're talking about 6010 and 7018 today. So the, 70, the 6010 would be in that F3 group. It's also in there with uh, 6011. So those materials have a lot of, uh, like I've stated and will state, cellulose in the flux, organic materials. They're a fast freeze electrode. So they run pretty well uphill and in uh, out of position welds because it's a fast freeze material. Low hydrogen is F4. It's Even though it runs better in a flat position, it's a lot more difficult to get that stuff to go in an uphill or horizontal position and deposit really sound welds. Um, so 
we've got those materials on the high end. So if I qualify a weld procedure or a, a qualify a welder with F4, the low hydrogen weld material, he can use F3, F2, F1, but it doesn't go the other way. But this is another difference between 6010 and 7018. Um, 7018 is in an, an F4 material. It's in the low hydrogen grouping and it's a little more uh, difficult to weld. And 6010 is in the deep penetration group, which is the 10s and the 11s. So something to keep in mind. Yet another difference between these two types of um, filler materials. Industrial piping. Shielded metal arc welding is widely used in the industrial piping industry, which includes many types of pressure piping. The types of electrodes most often used are the 6010 and the E7018 electrodes for welding low carbon steel pipe. A common practice is the use of E6010 electrodes to weld in the root passes and the E7018 electrodes to weld in the fill and cover passes. Industrial piping is generally welded from the bottom to the top except on small diameter pipe where it is done both ways. The reason that welding is done from bottom to top is most common because the slag is often trapped when the welding is the opposite direction. So what is this telling us? It's telling us that um, generally when we're welding industrial piping, um, power plants, uh, a lot of transmission lines for um, oil, natural gas and whatnot, you're using E6010 as the root pass, and then you're bringing it out with 7018. This is done for a lot of different reasons, but E6010 is a fast freeze electrode and runs in a root very well. E7018 is a low hydrogen electrode, so then you can weld it out from there, and you're probably not going to have any issues with um, hydrogen related cracking and whatnot it, if you'd have done it with all um, cellulose rods like an E6010. Plus you get higher deposition rates with the 7018. So when we're talking about the welding sequence on like industrial piping a lot of the time you're going to use E6010 as the root pass. And that's just that first pass. You might hit it with another pass after that, depending on welding procedures or whatever. But generally, you're going to put the root pass in with 6010 because it's a fast freeze rod and you can get a pretty good root pass in. It's an, um, If you're a good welder and you know what you're doing, you can put in a really good root pass. Um, it'll pass all the inspection criteria. And then from there you're going to go with 7018 to fill it out and to cap it out. Higher deposition rates, low hydrogen filler material, all of that stuff. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about, you know, the different welding rods and where they could be used and why they're used in those situations. But this is generally how it's done with low carbon steel. So you're going to put the root in with 6010 and then 7018 you're going to fill and cap with. Coated electrodes should be kept stored in their original containers or in a dry area such as holding ovens to prevent the coatings from absorbing moisture from the air, especially when the relative humidity is very high. This is especially true of the iron powder and low hydrogen coatings. An increase in their moisture content will produce unsatisfactory welds. In some cases, it is necessary to dry out the electrode coatings by baking the electrodes in a furnace or an oven before using them to weld. So we're talking about the 7018 and the low hydrogen electrodes. You can't store them on a shelf in open air because they'll just suck up the um, hydrogen. It's like being down, I, I live in the Houston area, and it's like living down here, and if you leave crackers or potato chips or anything out out in the open with the bag open for too long, they're not going to be crispy and crunchy for very long. It's gonna Those things are going to soak up some moisture, and it's not going to be crisp for very long. Whereas I lived out in Nevada, and I grew up 
in Montana and I lived in the desert part of Washington with a really dry climate and you can leave crackers and chips out on the counter for, you know, quite a while before they'll soak up enough moisture to lose that crispiness. Same goes for this, same theory. Um, you know, if you're in a really humid environment, you really got to watch your uh, low hydrogen electrodes and the amount of time that they're out of the oven. The oven here that we have on the top, that little guy, is um, a portable rod oven. I've been on jobs where the welders would check out their filler material for the day, get one of these little portable rod ovens, put the filler material in it, take it out to where they're welding, plug it in, and it keeps their filler material um, warm while they're out there welding. The oven on the bottom is a drying and storage oven. So depending on what kind of situation you got and what filler material you're using, you can use this one to um, rebake and recondition, I think is some of the terminology. But depending on what the the code is and your manufacturing uh, your manufacturer's recommendation on how to deal with the filler material, you use these ovens to to store 7018 in them, and you can recondition it too. If it's been out for a certain amount of time, then you need to um, recondition it at a higher temperature to chase off the moisture and whatnot. You don't use these for 6010. You will ruin the 6010 if you and cellulose-based electrodes if you throw them in these ovens. So cellulose-based electrodes like 6010 need a certain amount of moisture in them to function properly. I've Once again, I've, I think I told this one, but I've heard stories of people working out in the desert and they had to throw their 6010 electrode into a bucket of water or wipe it down with a wet rag and then use it to get it to function properly because out by Phoenix, it's just too dry. Covered some material here. Tried to point out the differences between 6010 and 7018. Um, I don't know if I accomplished what I set out to do, but if you have any questions, comments, um, critiques, I guess you know how to find me. My name is Gary Pace. I'm a PECWI, Katy, Texas. There's my email and uh, my website. Um, take care. Uh, GP out.